We are about to begin the ultimate video comparison between the brand new iPhone 16 Pro Max and the couple year old iPhone 14 Pro Max. We are going to be comparing all three of the lenses from this 1X main camera that we're on right now to this 0.5X ultra wide camera, which in this generation of phones, Apple has upgraded from a 12 megapixel sensor on the previous to a full 48 megapixel sensor on these new ultra wide cameras, as well as the 3X telephoto lens on the 14 Pro Max and the 5X telephoto lens of the 16 Pro Max, of which I am sorry for the super zoom and I did not film any of the video that you're about to see with these directly beside each other. I did try to compensate for the differences between 3X and 5X. So with that being said, this comparison is also going to be a bit different in that I am shooting everything unless otherwise stated in 4K 60 frames per second, editing in 4K 60 frames per second, and then exporting a 4K 60 frames per second ProRes file for upload to YouTube so that when you click that 4K quality button, you are seeing as close as you possibly can to what I'm seeing when I'm editing these videos. And you may be wondering, why are you filming this at night right now? Well, the reason for that is pretty simple. I feel that's where, if there are significant differences in these cameras, that is where they will be found. So we are here at the skate park. It is literally getting dark right now. The lights are on, but they can only do so much. And I'm gonna start here and then we're gonna go through all of the worst lighting conditions that I can think of. So the journey begins here on the ultra wide cameras because as I mentioned earlier, Apple has upgraded the ultra wide on the 16th generation from that 12 megapixel sensor to a 48 megapixel sensor. And I feel if there's ever a scenario to see differences in that, it's in this low light where we can see the difference in sharpness as well as detail when we zoom in and take a look at everything. And if you haven't noticed yet, I've been switching the audio back and forth and we're even going to switch between the different spatial audio modes that Apple has built in using the new studio quality mics that is implemented in these phones. So let's check another situation. I'm also intentionally picking situations here with these cameras where the lights are behind me and you can see as much dynamic range as exists on this sensor from the brightest of the brights that are in this scene behind me to whatever details are in the shadows. You should really be able to see the differences here with the ultra wide cameras in these two scenarios that I've just said. So now let's move to the main camera. This car pulling in with his headlights actually brought up a perfect thing that I didn't even think about for this video, the uh, flaring. The flaring was supposed to be less on these phones. And actually you could see in that previous example, and I could see very clearly on the screen that the flaring was nowhere near as bad on the 16 as it was on the 14. So at this point in the evening, it is dark. And the only light that we are getting is that of these street light things that are at the skate park, letting off a bit of light. And I figured that rolling around like this with the different light sources, as well as on the different lenses like we are, would give you enough of an example of the different lighting conditions that we're rolling into and out of to see some differences in like really, really poor lighting. So we're on the ultra wides again, and 
I think that you may see some differences here. I feel pretty confident in saying you'll see differences in the five and three X cameras, except for now, whenever we're super zoomed in and you just get what you get when the cameras are right beside each other. And I will be apologizing for this moving forward in this video, but I want to show the differences. Another point I wanted to make here is talking about the camera upgrades here. Apple is referring to the 48 megapixel sensor on the main camera as a fusion camera. And I don't know if that actually means anything. So I'm gonna need you guys to let me know if you're seeing an actual difference between these cameras in all of these situations. And don't worry, there are a ton more coming up throughout this video. And at this point, I could probably sit here and do a million different comparisons in the dark, but I have a lot more to get to in this video. So while we cycle through the cameras, once again, we are going to then transition into previously in this day where I have the rest of this video filmed. So I've yet to be able to sit down and take a look at the footage from both of these phones and really see if there actually are any differences that can be noticed. We've already taken a look at the low light and you guys have seen it. So you can let me know in the comments so far if you've noticed any differences. And I'm just gonna continue with the assumption that the video shot in good lighting conditions on both of these phones is going to be negligible in the differences that you can discern without zooming super far in. So with that, we're gonna take a look at some footage shot without direct sunlight in the shade that actually has direct sunlight areas behind it. Real quick here too, I thought it would be good to add in with the 1X, me talking with the brightly lit area behind me, but me in the shade, just to give you kind of ideas under these little bit harsher lighting conditions. So I noticed on that last round of shots that I was filming in a scenario that had a more dark background that was really detailed with all those leaves versus what I was just doing where I have a super bright background with the bright concrete reflecting the sun. So I think what we need to do now is continue with that darker background, super detailed with the other two lenses. sit here on the ramp for a second and this will give you a test between the audio of the two of them as well because I have my phone set up probably 20 feet away from me pretty far distance and now here we are once again sitting in the exact same spot but this time my camera is probably only eight feet away from where I'm sitting right now. So let's take a little bit of a break here from focusing on the shaded lighting conditions and from specific lighting conditions in general. And I'll just keep rolling around switching between cameras here because there have been some audio improvements on the 16 Pro Max, especially since the 14 Pro Max that I'm comparing it to. We now have 
what Apple has called studio quality mics built into the 16 Pro Max, which record spatial audio that later on after you get done filming, you can switch between the different modes such as cinematic or in frame and others that are there. And it gives you different sounds to your audio. You're gonna be able to hear how those are treated with these cameras and also the wind reduction that is brought to the 16 Pro Max by having these different microphones that record spatial audio. And so here we are on the main camera where I'm making sure that my shadow is cast directly on the lenses from both of these phones so that I can give you the most backlit situation that I could think of and just try to exploit these cameras and show the differences between them when they're being pushed to their extremes. We're now on the ultra wide, seeing what it looks like. And I'm gonna be really, really curious to see how this new phone handles something that I think I would be super, super dark, but I don't know how it's gonna handle it. So this has been me talking in these scenarios. Now I wanna do a little bit of riding that is purposefully backlit. <laughs> We're using that. I just redid that one three or four times because I either didn't push record or one of the phones overheated and I didn't get to record simultaneously doing all three tricks. Holy cow. Here's something we haven't compared yet. The 2X on these cameras. And also, I have this superstition where a train goes by and I know I'm gonna land my trick and it just worked out again. So these are the 2X cameras which I think in theory should be also very similar. Same story as comparing the One X. Essentially, if you don't know what is happening is with this 48 megapixel main sensor on the cameras, they're able to crop in two dimes to use only the center 12 megapixels of it and get a 2X image without any loss of light or quality. It's pretty awesome. So. I haven't tested it up to this point, but I think that me talking and showing the train here, rolling around, probably is an adequate comparison, and I will add this into everything else I'm doing. We have done a lot of comparing so far, and this is a situation where the wind is probably a bit more pronounced, so keep that in mind here when we switch between camera microphones, but we've done a lot of comparing so far, all of which I've been trying to do under non-ideal lighting conditions for filming video, but real world conditions that you're going to encounter. So it leads me to have a couple questions. One, how do you guys think these phones compare to each other so far in terms of quality? And are you noticing any differences? And two, A, I guess, sorry for the telephoto me again, but to B, how would you handle the telephoto comparisons? Something else we can test here are the macro capabilities of these cameras because with the 14 Pro Max, Apple introduced autofocus for the ultra wide camera. So as we can see here, we're focusing between the bike, then my hand back to the bike. So to test that, we are going to see how close we can get to the knob on this tripod before it stops focusing. 
And as you're able to see, the 16 Pro Max is actually able to focus just a tiny bit closer. And I'm here still in the ultra wide to bring you a bit of a PSA while we do the first comparison in direct lighting of this video that if you're gonna record slow motion on the 16 Pro Max and you think you're gonna record 4K 120 frames per second in anything other than the main camera, well, think again, because I just went to do it and it is only available with the one or two X zoom options. But since we're talking about it, we should probably do a slow motion comparison and start to do these direct sunlight and ideal lighting condition comparisons. So here we are in 4K 120 frames a second, 16 Pro Max, 1080p 120 frames a second on the 14 Pro Max, and I'm excited to see the differences here. A little bum that it can only be the 1 or 2x options, but we're going to test both, do a couple different tricks, and really show you the differences. So something that I just noticed is that you don't natively get 2x on the 14 Pro Max. It's either 0.5, 1, or 3x. Whereas on the 16, you get 1 or 2. So I had to manually zoom in to 2x, and you can only imagine you're seeing what that looks like when zooming in on 1080. So that'll be something to take into consideration too. <coughs> I do have to say that in regards to the slow-mo stuff, you know, I haven't watched anything back yet, but I could really tell on my screen that the quality was so vastly better on the 16 Pro Max, obviously. Can you tell the difference so far between these cameras? Because everything I've done up to this point has been something extreme or harsh or whatever to try and accentuate those differences. And I hope that they show because that means it was worth it to upgrade my phone.
All right, so we have tested all of the lenses in just about every single lighting condition that has existed today. There's one other thing in this whole thing that we haven't tested yet, and that is the stabilization to see if there's any differences between these two phones and their stabilization. So I realized that both of these phones have action mode. So we're gonna compare the 0.5 and the 1X with action mode turned on in the exact same scenario. Another test here of the stabilization between action and non-action mode, this time just walking sideways on the ground. That should hopefully be enough of a test between action mode, non-action mode, 1X and 0.5. I'm not even gonna bother with the 5 and 3X because they have to be a whole mile away for either of them to even work. And here we are right where we started in the dark where if you made it through this entire video comparison, you gotta let me know if you think there is a big enough difference between the 14 Pro Max and 16 Pro Max cameras in all of these lighting conditions to warrant picking up and upgrading or are you going to save yourself quite a bit of money and just replace the battery in your 14 pro max or whatever phone you have and just wait until there's a more significant upgrade for me i don't know that i can draw any conclusions yet because i haven't definitively looked at this footage at all yet but what I can say are that the quality of life improvements of one being able to switch between all of the different lenses while recording 4K 60 frames per second, which you could not do before, is going to be a literal game changer for me. I cannot tell you with all the BMX stuff and the spontaneity and craziness of it, how many times I've been recording and had to stop it, switch lenses, start recording again, just so I could shoot in 4K 60, but also use all of the different lenses. That is literally going to be a game changer because I don't know where someone's going to be from one moment to the next, or if something far away is about to happen, or if something really close is about to happen at the events that I'm covering. And so being able to just zoom in, zoom out without having to stop recording, literal game changer. Another quality of life thing with this new phone is something that I know you could already do with the action button before in opening the camera with that action button, but to be able to use the camera control button to instantly open the camera up and then instantly start recording, which you don't think you could do with the action button, is also going to be a game changer for me. I'm in situations while riding bikes with people where funny things happen or crazy things happen or I see something about to happen where just tapping the screen, tapping the camera icon, then hitting record can be the difference or getting or not getting or capturing a moment or a memory in time. So to be able to just hit that camera control button super fast and be able to open and start recording, another game changer for me. And so I guess the purpose of this video ends up being one where you draw your own conclusions from watching all of these comparisons to tell me if you think the quality differences are enough to make you want to upgrade your current phone. I would say personally that while I haven't seen the quality differences in the video yet, I think the quality of life differences that I've spoken about just now are enough for me to make it worth it because when you're in an event or you're somewhere and all your friends are around, you're capturing memories, 
to miss those moments because you couldn't get the camera open quick enough or to miss them kind of because you're too zoomed in or too zoomed out and you can't switch back and forth and you have to stop recording or be too far in or too far out. I think since my camera battery on the 14 Pro Max was already starting to go, I think this one's worth it for me and I'll let you decide if you think the quality of life and quality improvements are enough to make it worth it for you. Stay tuned, I plan to use my mom's 12 Pro Max in a comparison between the 16 Pro Max and it because I think that is where we will see some significant quality differences that if you are on a 12 Pro Max or older, you may find that it is worth it for the quality differences, but that is one for another video. Thanks for watching this one. This has been the ultimate video comparison between the 16 Pro Max and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Thank you. Have a good day.